So we carry on with our explanation for chapter uh, five, uh, infrastructure, uh, railway, railway infrastructure systems. And we have reached section three, railway geotechnical engineering. And we'll talk about this in details. So without further ado, let's have a look at the infrastructure Let's have a look at the, at the section uh, content. So, yes, here we go. So in this section, we'll be talking about the substructure components. We'll be talking about the last and their, uh, their characteristics. We'll be talking about the track formation, the subsoil forces on ballasted track and ballasted track maintenance. With that, we'll have a good understanding of the substructure of the track system. So what are the substructure components? You would have, what is the substructure? The substructure is anything below the sleeper and the superstructure is everything above the sleeper. So here is the sleeper, here is a rail, here is the, the fasteners, and here is the substructure. The first subcomponent is ballast. Then you have subballast or the formation layer, and uh, it's the same, and you have the subsoil. And this is a part of an embankment where the actually ballast is sitting. So this uh, soil represents the embankment where the, uh, where the track system uh, is supported by. And we need to understand these uh, two parts carefully. Also, you would have a drain here that allow to drain water. The first component, what are the palast? This is the palast, uh, the uh, aggregates that are under the sleever. And they, are, they have their own geometry. They have a depth, they have a width, they have a crest. And this width has to be addressed in a proper way. So there is a certain geometry for the shoulders that needs to be achieved. And here we see 7,600 millimeters. So that usually if you have a 7.6 meters as the width of the ballast, it's a little bit long, but between five and 7.6 meters is the right based on the standards. But you need always to think about the slope of the slope of your ballast, the shoulder, uh, the, the, the width and the thickness. These are some of the main components of your uh, ballast. Also for the embankment, two in one uh, slope is the most common. So you'd have an embankment of two in one. This will provide stability to the ballast and to the substructure as well to the track system. So you would think slope, thickness and depth. Ballast, Geometry, you need to, depth is around 40 centimeters, 30 to 40 centimeters, shoulder, sometimes 30 centimeters or more. Yeah, you should be looking at the standard and making sure that you adhere the standard. It's not only to the geometric, also the ballast material has to adhere to the standard. Shape, it should have a, a it, you should have an angular aggregate. You should have, the, you should meet the compressive strength. You should meet toughness and resistance to weather tests. What are ballast tests? If you have taken any soil lab, you would see a Los Angeles test, an aggregate impact value, a deval test, a resistance to impact, a photographic examination, a grain shape, resistance to weather test. All of these tests are parts, are examples of ballast test. What is ballast contamination? Now we have understood how we can construct our ballast and what are the geometry and material properties and how we can test it. But sometimes you would have phenomena after building this ballast. You would have what is called ballast contamination. And ballast contamination where fine particles enter into the ballast or water or mud or a mix of all come to the ballast to make this, uh, for example, a, 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 a shape or a condition or a phenomena that is similar to the one in the picture. So you would have either fine, this could be fines after ballasting, because you have uh, tamped the ballast, maybe you would have some fines. Sediments from the air, any dust or uh, something coming from the air. Fines rising from the subsoil, and this is a sign that, that there is a problem with the subsoil. And vegetation residues. 
this will lead to ballast contamination and will affect ballast properties. So how we can assess ballast defects, how we can assess the changes in the ballast condition, either you would be doing a track recording method where you would be sending your track recording trains and you would get the method of twist gauge settlement and uh, the standard deviation of that, or you would be sending your inspector, your visual inspectors, and to make sure that they have a, a they can inspect the track and see if there is any defects, or you would be, do, you, or you would be doing a sampling test, where you would be taking, for example, a cylindrical sample and you'd be test the compressive strength of the sample and, uh, and apply other tests. So what if we found that we have a problem with contamination or a problem with our ballast, what we can do? We can do the following activities. We can, do, we can clean the ballast. So this is a cleaning machine. We're taking the old ballast, clean it, and enter it in a, into a new uh, ballast. You can, have ta you can do tamping, and you can do renewal as well. You can renew the whole ballast. So now we need to talk about track formation. So but we, we, have, we talked about ballast, we talked about the properties of ballast, we need to talk about the track formation. The track formation is the layer be below the ballast and its main function to, to provide stability and to protect the ballast from the subsoil or, for example, water coming from the subsoil, fine particles coming from the subsoil, clay coming from the subsoil. So it's to provide protection to the subsoil. And the things that you need to think about the track formation, this stands 10 centimeters below the ballast, is bearing capacity, drainage, reinforcement of the formation. Maybe you would be doing some geotextiles, some uh, protection uh, in this layer to protect your ballast. So what are reinforcements of the formation? What kind of reinforcement we can do? You can do pavements on and slabs. You can put some pavement on the, on the subsoil uh, to give it some stability and some stickiness, you can put some chemicals, you can increase the thickness of the ballast, you can insert some protective layers such as BVC sheets, geotextile, and this will actually help mitigating many problems that can be coming to your ballast and with, will provide your track with a, with a longer life cycle. Now, how I can know if my subsoil have a problem? So if you have a recurrent defects in your track position, so you maintain the uh, track today and after two months, there is a, a, a problem. So you would be suspecting that there is a problem with the subsoil or you would have wet spots. And these wet spots is, is something like this, where you have clay coming and mixing with ballast or you'd have frost damage or you would have deformation of earth formation. Maybe you'd have cracks on the sides or you would have these uh, drain uh, uh, water uh, bonds that is coming in ballast pockets. So all of these are signs that there might be a problem with my, uh, with, with, my, with the subsoil. Now coming to the subsoil, what is the subsoil? The subsoil is the, uh, the soil and the ground that is below the blanket, below the formation layer and below the ballast. And its main job to, uh, to drain water to, and to provide stability to the whole track system. What it consists of, it can be coarse grain soil, it can be fine grain soil, and it can be organic soil. We obtain, and what do we obtain? We obtain the following values. We obtain water content, shear strength, California bearing ratio, CPR, compact ability of different soil types. And soil drainage, we can have an open drain facility and we can have an enclosed drainage facility. So by an open drain facility, I mean that the water can be drained on the side, uh, like this with an open channel, or you can have enclosed drainage facility where you have a pipe and this uh, water will be drained. Reasons for, of damage to soil formations, why soil formation would be damaged. The first one is that you would have a poor subsoil, that the subsoil itself was weak from the beginning, or you would have a high static and dynamic load, that uh, load coming from the drains is high, or you'd have sufficient compaction insufficient drainage, high groundwater levels. All of these reasons can lead to a subsoil deformation. What I can do, how to improve it, I can do vibration pressure compaction. I can do vibration filling compaction. And this is an example where you, uh, you would change your subsoil or would you, you do compaction while you, in, you insert a, new, a, a stronger soil. This is by a ground improvement using vibro compaction. 
or you would do chemical soil conversion. You would add some chemical soil nailing sometimes for slopes or geotic, or you would add some geotic styles and geogrids to add an additional stability. Now we have understood the, all of the components and what can and the defects that can happen on happen on our substructure. So what will happen on the ballasted track system and its behavior? So the following can happen, and by that we need to think about the concept of track quality. And with track quality, we need to think about settlement and average weighted index of number of component defects or, or defects. And let me just explain this. So. If you ask this, is this a high quality track? Is this a good quality track? People wanted to think about, is this an acceptable track or not? So many people would think about settlement as a way of describing track quality. So this is the track alignment. This is the original position. So we had the track on, on the origin position, uh, on, on its original position. After some time, they, you had uh, some load coming from different uh, trains and then the track starts settling. And at this point you said, okay, we need to tamp. We need to bring back the track to its quality. So uh, you need to overcome this settlement. So you do tamping and then the track is aligned. Then again, you do, uh, then the track lost its position. Then you do tamping and so on. So this tamping maintenance activity helps in maintaining the track geometry. And it's a sign of, uh, uh, it, it, you, and people say if, if, the, if the track does not have a poor alignment, then it's a high quality track or a proper alignment. But also sometimes people would think about different track components, the rail, the sleepers, the, uh, the, the, the subsoil, and they would try to build an, an, an equation with an average weighted index to provide uh, an, uh, an, approximation, an approximate index of a track quality and they would do it through different parameters. So if we look the, here at track gauge and track twist, this is the readings from the track recording car and you, it's in standard deviation. So here you would have 10 millimeter difference than the, uh, the uh, zero is the, is the proper one. So this is 10 millimeter difference far away from what is standard or minus five is the standard because most of the track is almost minus five. So this is around 15 millimeters far from the standard. So we say, okay, this is a weak spot. We need to have a look at this one. So this is in section 35 kilometers. Now, other, uh, you need to know that there are forces, there are track defects that happen because of forces in the vertical direction, horizontal directions, or cross level directions. And also there is the last settlement behavior by itself. And the standard track for, uh, the standard track for high speed rail, and this is just to know what is the standard what I can build, what I need to buy. So you would buy UIC 60 rails, you would weld them through long welded rails. You would try to choose the long, uh, the long uh, rail sections uh, with 2.6 meters pre-stressed concrete sleepers. You'd use hard rail, ballast uh, bed of height up to 30 centimeters and you would do, put a track protective formation of five to 10 centimeters. Now for blasted track maintenance, this will be one of the aspects that will uh, affect us and we will we'll need to think about this. So we'd need to think about tamping. And tamping, this is tamping, it happens every four to five years. Grinding, you would do grinding for the rails to overcome the weirs and different defects. This will happen every one to three years. Cleaning, this will happen every 12 to 15 years. And this is a cleaning machine where you would all remove the old ballast and put a new one. Rail replacement, and here they are doing rail replacement by putting new rails. Either you would be some maintenance defects for, you do maintenance for changing wooden sleepers or concrete sleepers. Rail fastenings, you would, uh, you would change the rail fastening every 10 to 30 years or replacement of ballast, the whole, not cleaning, but full replacement 20 to 30 years or doing fully rehabilitation, full rehabilitation of the subsoil more than 40 years. Now we understood the substructure components, the forces on the track and what maintenance activities we tend to do. So now you have a proper understanding of many activities that you would be conducting on the track system from construction to maintenance. With that, we reached section number four, which is at crossings, where we'll be talking about this in the next lecture.
I hope you have a proper understanding of the tax system and its sub and the substructure, and we'll discuss this in more details in the next section. Have a great evening.